The sign on the door read 21. That is the key that we have. It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read Hotel Ubu. Now maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. There are always ways to get inside other rooms, like outside. It was a massive mahogany wardrobe. Anything in there? There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague, lingering smell of camphor. What's camphor? I do not recognize this word. A cabinet stood beside the bed. The cabinet was empty, but it smelt of onions. No kidding, it really did. Onions? Who would keep onions in a cabinet? It's a kind of wood. Ah, right. Wood. Yes. And yes, this is definitely smells of a place where I could die, so let us save the game. La -dee -la -dee -da. Out we go. To dangerous areas. Camphor. A white volatile crystalline substance with an aromatic smell and bitter taste, occurring in certain essential oils. So it's some kind of a cleaning oil or something that causes the smell in a wardrobe. Makes sense. Camphor. I've heard that in some other game. Maybe. At least it feels like I've heard it in some uh, other adventure game. The closet was a solid, impressive piece of antique furniture. The cabinet had no drawers, just a single door. They usually do have a single door. Maybe a Dumbledore. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. The bed was several times larger than the narrow cot I'd been given at the place I was staying. Well, it's not a fancy hotel where you're staying, I'm sure. The bed was so... The bed was freshly made, and the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. How about under the bed? Or maybe then? It was the battered leather briefcase I'd seen Plantar carrying just before he died. I searched the interior of the briefcase, but as I'd half expected, it was empty. The door led back into the hall, idiot. Who are you calling an idiot? That wasn't in the uh, subtitles. Why did you add an idiot there? I know where it leads, but you don't need to call me an idiot. That would be actually kind of funny if you played an adventure game where ever you looked at something, first he gives the description of the item, and then you, he calls you an asshole or an idiot, stupid, dumb. Like if you didn't understand what you were looking at. Maybe I should save here. I'm gonna save here. And then try to see what is outside the corridor. Oh no! Con Merlin is coming back. Merlin! I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. But instead we run into the wardrobe. Don't open the other door, please. Otherwise you will break the cliché. Thank you. Nice Popeye face there, George. So 
So he left his uh, pants behind. The ones that we asked about Todrick for. The pants about. matched the jacket which the killer had lost in Paris. Well, let's see if he left anything in the pockets. Definitely left something. I couldn't believe my luck when I found two items in the pockets of the pants. The first was an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. The second was a pass card which read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words, Club Alamut. Yeah, no clues on that, except the name of the club that he's gone to. It was the card I'd found in the hotel bedroom. It read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. So now we know the full name that he's using. Thomas Merlin. Now I wonder what he put in the uh, safe of the hotel. I'm sure it must be some kind of an important item in there that we need. There was no one registered under the name, but the name in the book for room 20. There's no bell ring in here? Oh, there you are. Still got that dainty walk, I see. What now, monsieur? Oh, you're growing impatient already now, are you? I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation scar. <laughs> I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats. How about this? Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. So you're aiding a murderer, despite that we said that he's a murderer. Just so you don't betray his confidence and trust. You're an asshole, my good sir. A true asshole. Thanks for your help, buddy. I think we may need that uh, English charm again for this puzzle. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? I got the key. Thanks for your help, ma'am. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So, that deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Yes! Follow me, George! Onwards! To battle! <laughs> My horn broke. Sue me. Did you place a package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. But that is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. No, if you... he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. No, you're supposed to have a little uh, lower voice there, Lady, and go, I am the... You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Just keep your panties on, please. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. 
Thanks. Thanks. That's what I said. Satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. Excellent. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. Good plan, man. Good plan. It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plantau. How do you? How can I tell it's ancient? It could be something new. And this is where we save. Because I am going to kill myself. Well, not in real life. I mean, I mean I'm going to kill George. So we just uh, go outside. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> just a minute, monsieur. Um, yes? What's your problem? No problem. If you cooperate. What do you mean? What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Got any ID? Oh. Well, all right. Or are you just gonna go with it? Flap. You flap. Flap. I still think that the uh, weasel's name is Guido. But Flap. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Is this what you're after, Guido? See, si. That's see. I remember the name. I can explain everything. Well, almost everything. Too late. You're on your way to feed the fish. I'm allergic to fish. I, I break out in blotches when I eat tuna. Let's go. Sometime later... There goes George into the river. Rip. Yep. Our first death in the game. Now let's go back and do it the way we we're supposed to do it. It's always funny when you see that sequence of them th really throwing you to the fishes. Literally. The door was locked. Well, use the key, you dumbass. And you called me an idiot. You're way too tempted to call George, George, Georgie. Well, if you want to call him Georgie, just go. Go ahead. I keep calling him George because of the way Nico pronounces the name. The cobbles of the alleyway look very distant and very hard. Can I actually fall here? If I wanted my shin sticking out of my shoulders, I could have jumped. Do it. Mama Stobart didn't raise no suicidal fools, though. Yeah, you'll survive, I'm sure. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript, but I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. Archibalds! Yeah, I know who you were referencing to, Jace. I knew. Good old Georgie Costava. That lovable, stupid Muppet from a Paper's Place. Paper's Place. Hello again. I wonder if there's anything we can talk about. Does the name on this matchbook mean anything to you? Indeed, it does. For Alamut was the home of the old man of the mountains. Old man of the mountains? Do you not know him? No. No, I don't. Could you tell us who he is? Tell me again about Alamut. It is the home of the old man of the mountains. You're not gonna tell anymore? Is it the uh, old man in the mountains who gave the thief his clothing? Is it that the story? Or something else that we don't know about and you don't want to tell about? You are a mystery yourself, Mr. Man. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. And now we can freely go outside because we don't have anything incriminating in, uh, or suspicious on us. Just a minute. What's your problem? No problem. What do you want? Just a route. Oh. Search him. You bet. Oh uh, yeah, heard it before. 
Just a search us and hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Get your damn dirt. Get your damn nothing, Guido. Zilch. Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Randir, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flex. Yeah, you may be the authorities here, but if I really call the real authorities, you will be hightailing out of here, now wouldn't you? I don't think you want to deal with the police. And also, I was trying to quote the Planet of the Apes, but I totally screwed it up. If the manuscript was what Flap and Greedo were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. Maybe I should have quoted that, yeah, Jace. <laughs> hey, you, get your damn hands off her. How's my You're George McFly voice? To believe what I found. It's not another part of the clown's costume, is it? Nope, something bigger. And also, yeah, I was trying to do the Planet of the Apes because he called the flap a big ape, you know. Get your it's a medieval manuscript. Get your paws of me, you damn dirty ape. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be. Which means it's worth enough to kill for. So what is it? Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I have, many Their times. official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. World's earliest bankers. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy named Hughes the Payne. Arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim army. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many of the enemy numbered just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the hands of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. They lost Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Totally a myth. But a great story. Jeez. So the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway. We're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. Well, Mary. Maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Yeah. Maybe this manuscript is the key. Mm hmm. We'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, Josh. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. Also, I remember when the first time when I played this game. I was also playing Gabriel Knight 3 at the same time, pretty much. And I was like, what's with the Knights Templar being in every story these days? And it was just two games that had Knights Templar in it. By coincidence. But I was generalizing every adventure game at the time. <laughs> All the stories have Knights Templar in them. What the hell, man? I found Plantow's briefcase in the killer's hotel room. It was empty, of course. Of course. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. I think they're both made up. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. 
It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. Yeah, usually. It's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Well, the whole matchbook itself is a clue. If we knew where the club, club element is, then we would know more clues about Khan. Ever thought of that, you stupid idiots? Do I have to be the detective here myself all the time? No wonder adventure characters uh, need help. They cannot think for themselves. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Er? Uh. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krohn Museum. I'll give you the address. Thank you. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? Who was the she fairest of them all? so much when I was a kid. Mom carried me out of the movie theater. Of course. It didn't frighten me in the least. Why not? Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. The crocodile in Peter Pan is cool. But the, the Queen in Snow White? Yeah, scary. And also the the faces on uh, on the mirror. That's Bafomet. Ever heard of the uh, uh no not not Bafomet. Uh Janus? If we're going Greek uh, Greek mythology, it's it's uh, Janus. Or in American way, Janus. At least that's what I remember. It could be Bafomet. I, I do remember that Baphomet is the one with the with the multiple faces. But then again, Janus is also the one with the two faces. I could be mixing up my mythology here. Exactly, Jace. That is how you type it. Yep. J A N J A N U S. Janus. Janus. However you want to pronounce it. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. It's an evil god. That's what I do remember. This three-faced one. Yeah, yeah, funny, Jace. I didn't want to go that route because it's stupid and the childlike Jay Anus. Ha 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 ha. I said Anus because it's a Butthole! <laughs> a knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Her disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. Yeah, it's not a trick if you know how to speak or read Latin. It's something you study and you have expertise on. Not a trick. Pulling a rabbit out of somebody's hat, that's a trick. You are very, dispre very disrespectful there, Nico. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. Hey! Solid Snake has made a very good home in a solid cardboard box in many iterations of Snake. So you don't go be dissing them boxes. I like boxes! There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is a Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. 
What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. Interesting. Very interesting pictures, but it, it, it definitely has the uh, feel of uh, some kind of a treasure map. All of them must be locations in certain places and have clues on what you need to do. Maybe I'll check out the Kroon Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, George. I'm sure we will. Kroon Museum, here we come. Onwards. You'd say she's way too pretty to be performed. <sighs> Jace, you are so funny. <laughs> I wonder if I can uh, ask her about more about my uh, future. Oh hi. Oh hi, Mark. Hello, my handsome friend. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Hmm. What a hunk. He's a killer. I can see that. His eyes say it all. And you still think he's a hunk? Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No. But I can tell you one thing. There's no such place as the Club Alamu in Paris. Okay, so we know it's See you not. Later. That's right, Monsieur. You will. So now we know that the uh, club element is definitely not in Paris. What kind of answers will George find in the Musée Crune? Tune in next time for the next episode of Broken Sword.